Tom Southwell. I was one of the production illustrators on Blade Runner for six months in 1980 and 81. The first meetings that I had with Larry and David and Ridley were dominated by the specifics that Ridley had in mind for the certain graphics. He says, we need a lot of stuff. Illustrations and graphics and badges and neon signs and billboards and car graphics and things like that. And he kept saying he wanted it to look like, like heavy metal, the magazine. More or less what, what he was saying was it was very eclectic. There was stuff from every phase of art. Uh, he didn't want anything to look like it was done by the same guy. So there was a series of uh, different qualities that were supposed to show up. And then when, every time that I tried to do something that was particularly modern or futuristic, he would try and push it a little further into the past so that it had a little bit more of an overlap. And it finally dawned on me that it wasn't making a, a utopia, we were making hell. And it was going to be beautiful despite this, this clash. Once I, I got on board, I just flew. I mean, I knew exactly what to do. I knew I could do anything as long as it was complex. I knew if, as long as it was eclectic and it didn't line, and nothing lined up in its, uh, you know, hodgepodge of everything. Once it's presentable or, or, or perfectly clean as, as finished art, they would then go in front of uh, Larry Paul and David Snyder and uh, Ridley Scott for approval. Now, what did happen uh, uh, frequently was I would do something and it would be approved to that degree, and then past that, it would go to somebody else. It would either be aged down more or it would be uh, altered in some way. They would, I mean, for instance, on, on um, Deckard's uh, entry card to get into his apartment, I had done the uh, block logo that Frank Lloyd Wright had done for the Innes House. I had put that on the card and then put arrows and which way it's supposed to go in the slot. And Ridley Scott said, can you put something on top like it was added to it? So we put an additional thing in red on top of that and then that was laminated. And that sort of thing was happening all the time. I mean, there was always some way of making it more complex or more broken or used or scratched or more realistic. You know, I have some people come to me and, and say, you know, is this the way you did it or is this the way you did it? And, and I would have to say, well, I did it like this, but who's to say that the prop master wasn't asked to age it down or add this or put a sticker on top of that or, you know, do something else to it? I wasn't there from the time it was created to the time it got shot by uh, Jordan Cronin with his camera. On the Deckard card, uh, the ID badge for the police department, we put a bunch of stuff that we clipped out of magazines, little, little snippets here, a little thing there, and I was picturing that it was sort of like the kinds of things that they're doing now on uh, dollar bills to make them difficult to reproduce, sort of the security devices. And uh, in some cases, I mean, that, that Vitvon card was intended to look like some sort of a mechanical thing that would only work going in a certain way and it would have your ID, sort of like a smart card, you know, that, that has information that comes and goes. You know, every time you put it in, it writes on it, uh, or take it out. So, I mean, I was, I was sort of, um, I didn't invent it, but I sort of like was anticipating it coming. Early on, Sid Mead had done all these beautiful drawings in black and white of the noodle bar, and he had not done a color version of it. They were just these beautiful line drawings of it. And uh, I was sitting in the art department with Larry, and he said, well, we can call this place, because I'm going to make a sign. And I said, well, it's white. I said, do you remember uh, when you were a kid, we had a thing called the White Tower in, in New Rochelle, where I, where I live. He said, we had a place called White Castle in Chicago. And I said, same thing, it's the same thing. Yeah, they had these, it was like the predecessor of McDonald's. So the idea was that this was this little noodle bar that was with chain, obviously a chain, and, and it, I thought, well, it looks good white. So I, I, I pitched, how about the White Pagoda, you know, which is sort of like a White Castle, or White Dragon? And he liked the idea of the White Dragon. He said, oh, that, that's Asian. You know, it, it, it'll, it'll fit right in. 
And then, so I got my book of neon out, and they had a picture of a really good dragon. So I went ahead with that, and then they had two tongues, so it could go back and forth, and then, and then uh, this. Uh, the only color in the place where there was this china red, the green, and then this uh, black and uh, uh, yellow outline that goes, goes around it. And then with a bit of uh, you know, the food being displayed here on the menu, you know, ghastly food that you really wouldn't want to eat, but then again, uh, you know, the, they had the noodle bar. One day this parking meter design would come in that uh, Sid Mead had done an illustration for and that had gotten approved. And they wanted a, a sticker on that that would have some kind of information. So I'm going to invent something and then it's going to either get approved or not approved. And I don't think they've ever changed any of the words that I put in. And I even put a type line, I think, on most of the um, urban stuff that says uh, Union printed in the new city never thinking that anybody would ever see it because we were going to be that far away from it. But the type of thing, it was everywhere. I mean, the, his marching orders were, I want this movie dripping with bleeping graphics. And Ridley Scott knew that you're not going to be able to sit behind a car in traffic and not see seven things of graphics on the back of every car. It's everywhere, and the whole world is going to be like that. And, you know, my, my walk, don't walk signs turned into Walk now, walk now, walk now. And you know we're doing that now. You, you, you can go in LA or New York and you can be standing on a corner and say, walk now. <laughs> but we're learning to screen it out in our minds so that we can get through it all. But uh, yeah, that was, that was part of the plan was to have it everywhere. Now, this was done in 1980 and 81 before the Macintosh had, had provided graphic artists with the basic tools to, to do graphics. But back then, I would do everything by hand. I would literally would take a, a, a Sharpie pen and I would draw my neon line and then I would have the, the print turned into a white line on black by making it a photostat, a reverse, they call it. And then I would take a magic marker in color and I would float the color on, on top of the line so that you could see the various colors that were gonna be in it. And then a lot of the Japanese I would have translated. I would take a picture from the Ginza or a picture out of a, um, a Japanese graphics book and I would have that translated into English. Or I would take a word in English like restaurant or uh, cocktails or whatever and then have that translated into Japanese and then uh, I would be able to present all the material in both languages. Now, I think the most fun one was uh, for uh, Cuisinart because I got to animate it. I would have the blade spinning and then I'd have this tomato up at the top and it would kind of travel down and when it gets down into the bottom of the thing, it would be all these bouncing around little pieces. I saw that as being in you know, a 20, feet high and you know and of course we couldn't afford 20 feet high we could i think it's i think it's four feet or six feet high and uh but they had a great deal of fun making you know making that and uh the cuisinart people paid for the manufacture of that and i think everybody was very grateful to to get that in there ridley scott brought in a book of uh, german uniforms that had insignia and uh badges and things and there was a German uh, fascist quality that he'd like to have in the police force. So, I mean most of the things that had graphics were the police uniforms because you know I, I don't think I had anything on Deckard's costume but there was a costume that was sort of like riot gear that they uh, had with head masks and uh, uh, chest protectors and things like that and uh, one of the things that I had I indicated that was following the, the German was the uh, idea of uh, the skulls, which could be uh, used as badges for having scored certain hits. Or uh, uh, there was a whole, whole uh, German army uh, unit that used a skull as part of its insignia. And I thought a modern version of that would be suitable for what uh, Ridley Scott was asking for. And then he also gave me a book on American Indian uh, baskets and weavings and uh, things that because there were some symbols in there that he thought could be useful which is, for instance is the the SS that we put on the back of this of the spinner as a kind of a, a chevron to say stay away because you'll get burned or, or something like that and since I was going to do graphics that were made of a certain size 
I needed to know exactly how big the space was on the vehicle. So I would go over to uh, Gene Winfield's place with a great big piece of paper and I would lay it over the car and, and I would trace out where the windshield would go or where the wheel housing would go and I would make myself a, a pattern. And then I would indicate how much space there was for a particular graphic or, or where it would be, where it should go, or which ones are going to have to stretch. Like, for instance, the SS uh, Chevron that goes across the back of the car, I had to figure how stretchable is that thing going to have to be. Now, the 99S995, I believe everybody's entitled to interpret it any way they want. I thought it was like a 911, you know. It, it, uh, it should be police 911, and then I started to lay it out. 911 didn't lay out particularly attractively because it's a big nine and these little dinky ones. So what I did was I chose 99S because it was alphanumeric. It was more gibberish. And if you go to Mobius or, or these uh, heavy metal things, you'll see a lot of things you don't understand. Just a gibberish of alphanumerics that take your mind away from it in some way. And I, uh, that's sort of what I was, was going for there. I thought it looked more uh, like a Mobius thing than, you know, just three numbers. The, one of the fun things for me was the magazine stand, and uh, they need to be from the future. It really does not want to see any Vogue or uh, Time magazines from right now. He wants all new magazines. So I looked at the script and, and saw, okay, this is the tough, future. So my favorite one of, of all was the one that I had the most fun, which is Kill Weekly magazine. I had this very rough drawing of a, a Doberman Pinscher, I think it was, and, and uh, the cover article is Guard Dogs You Never Feed. You know, and, and we did other things. I mean, we had a soft porn. There was Horn magazine, I believe, and we had a fashion magazine, with a, a, which I thought was a clever idea, a hair neon. I, got, I think I did 11 covers. and. Uh, we made them the exact size of existing magazines so that they could just wrap them around them. And they were very haphazardly done because we knew they were going to be deep background if, if seen at all. And I, th I don't think they even show up. I would say that half the stuff that I did is on camera. I mean, if I could point there, I could find 150 things in the movie that I did and designed graphics for. But there's 150 things that I did that didn't show up. You know, and they aren't all things that just got nicked. They, they didn't like the design. It was just stuff that, you know, showed up in the deep background somewhere. I mean, I have to say, some of that stuff is just we got to figure, put something down, and you're trying, you're grasping for straws. Really, the, it's not in the script. You don't want to bother Ridley Scott with, with some minutia like that. You want to just okay, here it is, and you present it, and he, he can say yay or nay, and. Uh, it's got to move along quickly. You'd be surprised how fast we, we were going on this stuff. So I was busy, very, very busy, and I was going as rapidly as possible. But I got, I got everything done, and it was a mammoth amount of work. So, I mean, it, we all learned a lot. I mean, everybody's trying to live up to that kind of quality to this very day.